In this video, I'm going to share with you two different ways that you can track leads within Google Analytics using goals. Before we jump in, there's a couple of items that I want to cover. And the first one is why you need Google Analytics to track your leads to begin with. And I could just break this down into one sentence. It's because if you can't measure, you can't improve. So before you do any sort of lead generation activities or investing in uh, driving traffic or anything like that, you must have your Google Analytics set up to track your leads. One more distinction that I want to bring up, and that's the difference between Universal Ad Analytics and Google Analytics 4. Google Analytics 4 is the newest version of Google Analytics. This software is constantly evolving. However, I do want to call out that in this particular video, I'm going to show you how to install or configure goals with Universal Analytics. And the reason is pretty simple. It's because Universal Analytics is still the standard way to integrate with other software services. So it's just uh, Google Analytics 4 just hasn't caught up yet. So what I recommend for you to do now, if, if you're just getting started with Google Analytics, is to start with both implementations of Universal Analytics and Google Analytics 4. That's just kind of in the background. And when you set up your account, you'll have the option to to spin up both different types of properties. Okay, now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's dive into how to set up the two different ways to track your leads in Google Analytics using goals. So there's two different options. There's my preferred way of doing it, and there's a rather subpar way of doing it, and I'll explain why in just a bit. So I'm going to first start off with explaining the, the not-so-great way of tracking your leads with Google Analytics. So let's go over to Admin, hop over to Goals, and let's have a look at the different goal types that we have available. So let's go to custom. So there's four different types. Two of them are relevant to tracking leads, and that's the destination type and event type. So the first type that I'm going to go over, and this is the not ideal alternative that I, that I recommend, is destination. So it's really simple to, to implement. So if we just give this uh, a test name, go to continue. All you need to do is just put in the, the path of your URL or the complete URL like you see here. And that's it. Anytime, so after you implement this goal, anytime a new user goes to this particular page, it pings a, a goal completion in your analytics. So the pro is that it's super easy to set up as you can see, but there's um, another con, another subtle con, which is if you have a form that redirects a user on, on submission to another like confirmation page or a thank you page, that creates an additional step. That's not ideal. It's subtle, but it's not ideal, right? But more importantly, if you have someone that is a user that is going to the thank you page or the confirmation page, then that's going to mess up your data. It's going to make it less accurate. 
So that's my biggest gripe with this particular method. So now let's go to the to the recommendation. So now let's look at the alternative that I suggest, which is creating an event. Okay, so I went back to goal description and I'll put a test event here. Go to event, let's hit continue. So here we have to pass in a category name, an action name, a label, and a value. These last two are optional and I recommend to, to put the first three in there, of course. Uh, value, this for lead generation purposes is not that helpful unless you know precisely how much a lead is worth for your business. And this could be a moving target, which is why I don't really um, put pass any values in here. So the reason why I recommend using the event as the goal type to track your leads is because it's more accurate. So if you can imagine that a user is on your website, they fill out the form on that form submission, the event, which by the way, we need to configure. So that's, we'll touch on that in just a second. That event, the form submission event gets sent over to Google Analytics. And then we turn that event into a goal, which we see here. So that's, that's more accurate because you don't have a particular user accidentally navigating to, to a thank you page or something like that. Now the, the con, the not so great part is that you have to configure an event on your website. And this can be a little uh, cumbersome depending on your website or what kind of forms that you use. Best case scenario, you have a form that has these built-in um, Google Analytic event triggers that get passed to, to your Google Analytics account, and you don't have to worry about that. On the other side, if you don't have a form that can do that for you, then you'll have to set this up manually. So in the blog post that I've created, I outline a few different ways on how to do this. Um, I walk you through uh, the code snippet, a, um, a feedback form that I created, with the full HTML and then also uh, a video where I create an active campaign. I will, I go through the active campaign documentation and uh, set up the, the um, event trigger that way. Now, after you've configured your event, whether that's through a, a pre-built integration with your forms or if you did it manually, that's, that's the hardest part. Then the easy part becomes just mapping the category action and label names with your goal. So for instance, if I passed in a form as a category,